everyone and welcome back to the barn. Today I wanted to talk about the differences between English and Western. Now they are two entirely different disciplines and there are also a lot of sub-disciplines within each of those two. However, I am going to focus on showing. So the difference between showing Western and the difference between showing English. Let me bring out my two models and we'll get started. Let's start with the headstall. This is a lighter leather. This is not in style right now. They prefer dark leather headstalls at the moment. So you will always have a snaffle bit for the English classes for showing. This one has a chain on it because it's a Kimberwick. You have the nose band, throat latch, and the reins. There's several kinds of reins that you can have, but this one is just one style. You can have braided, you can have solid. People change their minds depending on what works the best for them. They are always connected. You can see there's a buckle on the top and they hang just in case you fall off going over the jump. Next, we'll talk about the saddle itself. So first off, you have irons instead of just your regular stirrups. They hang down, knee flaps, seats a little more close contact. On mine, it's a personal preference, but this sheepskin right here is actually a gel pad, and it's more of a shock absorbing, and it pushes you up just a little bit and helps you with your position. And of course, the pad underneath is for displaying your number. That's why it's got this blank spot right here so that you can attach your number to it and a girth that I try to match to the color of the horse. When it comes to fitting your English saddle to your horse, there are all kinds of paints and quarter horses. There are some that are tall and more lanky or kind of keep in the middle. You've got some that are short and stocky and don't even have a withers. So when it goes to fitting your English saddle to your horse, I would most definitely consult a professional. When it comes to English terminology, it's known as the walk, the trot, and the canter. When it comes to showing in English, it is not required, but highly suggested that you braid the mane and the tail. What I mean with braiding the tail is it's a fine French braid that runs from the top down the tailbone and ends in a nice little knot, and you have the big full tail at the bottom. When it comes to holding your reins English, you always hold them in two hands. So what you do is with the reins, you take your hand and you grab it like this and then the top part comes out between the pointer and your thumb and points towards the head. And then you do the same thing with the other side. Some people like to take their pinky and wrap it around the bottom between their ring finger and their pinky. It offers a little bit more control. Let's talk about Western. With the Western head stalls, there are lots of different choices. So this is going to be your regular curb strap, curb bit head stall. So it has a shank on it and it has the reins of course that are separate. So you have the curb strap and no throat latch. So there are a lot of different rules in regards to age and head stall types and bits. I'll get into that in another video. With the Western saddle, the first biggest difference is going to be the structure. So you're going to be in the saddle a lot more, more confining, as well as your legs are going to hang down a lot lower and a lot straighter. You'll have a little bit of bend in the knee, but not nearly as much as the English where you have almost a, a 45 degree angle. Very similarly to the English is you do want proper body position, which means your shoulders, your hips, and your ankles will still all be in a line. When showing Western, you don't have a spot for the number. So what usually people do is they pin it to their pads here in this area. The terminology for the movement in Western is the walk, the 
the jog. And the lope. When you're showing Western, you should band the mane. As with the English, if you're trying to properly fit your Western saddle to your horse, I would most definitely consult an expert. Holding the reins for a curb bit headstall is always done in one hand. So what you do is you combine both of the reins and you have the tails hanging off to one side. And then in your left hand, usually, some people prefer the right, but there is a reason you ride with your left. It goes through the front, and then you grasp it all with your rest of your fingers, thumb goes on top, and it sits right in the middle. Some people prefer to take their pointer finger and put it between the two reins for more control. This is typically how you would hold your reins for a curb bit in Western pleasure. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something, even a little bit on the differences between English and Western. Of course, I only focused on one small aspect when I started listing it out to see what, what there was different about the two. There is so much more than what I talked about today. There's clothing, spurs, bits, um, even hand positions, how to hold the reins, different head stalls even within each of the different classes that we do, styles of English saddles, styles of Western saddles. It is a very, very deep subject, and I have only scratched the surface of it today. So if you'd like me to keep going, if you're interested in more differences, let me know below. Otherwise, please like and subscribe, and have a good day.